Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm John McElroy, and here are some of the most important stories going on in the automotive industry. GM introduced its all-new Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra today. Both critically important pickups for those brands and from a profitability standpoint, critically important to General Motors. Pricing, fuel economy, and other specifications will be released at a later date, but here is what we've got so far. As you can see, the styling of the Silverado is very evolutionary. I dare say that people who do not follow the truck market closely may not even notice that this is a new truck, but the Sierra is a more daring design. And here's a clever design feature. The corners of the back bumpers are not so that they become an easy step up to the truck bed. Also, the tailgate features a torsion bar and rotary damper that makes it easy to open and close. Inside, the styling change is more noticeable. The gauges are larger to make them easy to read and the buttons and controls can be operated even if you're wearing work gloves. These pickups now come with the MyLink infotainment system with natural language voice recognition. Under the hood, there are three brand new engines, a 4.3 liter V6, a 5.3 V8, and a 6.2 V8. All of them feature aluminum blocks, direct fuel injection, cylinder deactivation, continuously variable valve control, cross-bolted main bearing caps, and a structural aluminum oil pan. The engines are all mated to six-speed automatics. Like I said, GM has not released horsepower ratings or fuel economy numbers or other specifications. For now, we'll just have to enjoy looking at the pretty pictures. And who knows, if those specs are good enough, the Silverado or Sierra could become serious contenders for the North American Truck of the Year Award next year. And guess what? We just got the list for the finalists for the North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards for this year. In the car category, the top three are the Ford Fusion, Honda Accord, and Cadillac ATS. On the truck and utility side, the finalists are the Mazda CX-5, the Ford C-Max, and the Ram 1500. The jury now has until January 2nd to determine who will win the awards, which will be announced at the Detroit Auto Show about a week later. I'd love to know which car and truck you think should win the award, so I think that will make that the question for tomorrow's poll. Renault has been one of the hardest hit automakers due to the slumping economy in Europe. It needs cash, so it just sold its remaining shares in Volvo trucks. It got nearly $2 billion for its 6.5% stake. Two years ago, the French automaker sold close to a 15% stake in Volvo. Renault says it's going to use the money to reduce its debt and make investments in France, Russia, and China. Nissan started building batteries for the LEAF in the U.S. at a facility located next to its assembly plant in Smyrna, Tennessee, which also has been retooled to build the LEAF. The lithium-ion battery plant has the capacity to produce up to 200,000 battery packs a year, depending on demand, but it could take a while before it needs all that capacity. The company has only sold 46,000 LEAFs worldwide since they went on sale two years ago. Speaking of electric cars, coming up next, we'll take a deep dive into the styling of the BMW i3 electric. Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. Benoit Jacob is the head of design for BMW i. That's the name of the brand that BMW chose for its electric cars. At the recent LA Auto Show, I asked him to show me the highlights of the exterior styling on the i3 electric. 
Benoit, you've chosen a very unique look for the electric cars that you're doing. Explain why you've come up with these kinds of proportions and form language. This is actually true. Although, like you uh, recognize into BMW i a few BMW genes, uh, for example, like looking at the front, there's an history that we have to respect. And you see that in the form of these kidneys, for example. They are, of course, uh, in the case of an EV, uh, closed because we don't need that much air to cool the whole mechanic. But, uh, of course, um, I typically say that uh, I uh, is a very small letter combined with these very famous letters BMW, but it gives us a certain level of freedom to basically uh, turn a new interpretation which is specific for electric vehicles. We had, for example, uh, the possibility uh, to develop uh, a shape language which is very purposeful because the car alone is very purposeful. Uh, this is a mega city vehicle, that's how it was born. And uh, of course we've been questioning how can we use the advantage of the electric drivetrain in a very uh, totally new layout that basically offers a lot of advantage and maximize the advantages of uh, let's say the EV or the electric drivetrain layout. So just to get back to the grill, you felt that this really says BMW. You didn't want any question as to what the car is. This is a sub-brand, so at some point you have to recognize the brand also with the most essential icons. We did add uh, though the possibility to see, to give it a bit of slight new interpretation. As I said, uh, they are of course closed, uh, no hair needed, but also they are a little more precise, a little more edgy. And uh, what you recognize of BMW, as always, is uh, terrific proportions and, uh, of course, uh, a lot of precision in the surfacing, a lot of precision into the line walk. Mm -hmm. The DLO, too, the glass opening here, very unique approach. Explain why you went this way. This is true. And um, actually, we wanted um, uh, in this show car to basically celebrate the idea of lightweight because uh, this car is made a lot of uh, out of a lot of like lightweight material, essentially carbon, I would say. And uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that the car, from aesthetic point of view, celebrates uh, the idea of lightweight. And then uh, we achieved that uh, through this very airy uh, green house, this very strong uh, window graphics and contrast uh, that you see from the hood up to the roof, the window graphics and stuff like that. So this is basically what makes uh, the car uh, truly unique because we want also uh, to basically uh, give uh, these cars a very iconic look, a very outstanding look, uh, yet of course a very exciting look. I love this window. This almost reminds me up to here of an electric plug. Is that part of the look that you went for? This is actually true and some guy in the team uh, had this idea. It could also evoke a NACA air duct. Uh, basically many interpretation. We call it the stream flow. Funny, uh, <laughs> enough to basically depict or describe uh, a bit the whole thing. And you see that for BMW i, we didn't have to basically copy uh, the off-mass technique, the one that you typically know uh, from BMW. We have this level of freedom again. And uh, there was a reason to do this also. Uh, again, as a city car, you have to offer a very good visibility alone. Uh, the driver will be sitting in a semi-commando uh, sitting position, uh, upright over the traffic. This goes with safety. And also, uh, this window graph graphics uh, allows a very uh, peripheral view, which is of course paramount for a city car. Benoit Jacob, thanks so much for taking us through the exterior styling. That was my pleasure. Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for Autoline After Hours. We'll get going at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2300 GMT. It's the show where you will get the best insider information in the business. So join me and that auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo later on today. And that wraps up this report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.